Welcome. You are about to listen to a destiny-changing message preached by Pastor David at Caris Phase 2. Caris Phase 2 is our revival-seeking youth ministry where young people are coming to know Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. Be blessed as you listen. Wherever you are, you are representative of God. Yeah. You are an ambassador. Second Corinthians chapter five, yeah. verse twenty and twenty-one. He said, "We beseech you, therefore, as ambassadors of Christ, be ye reconciled." We are speaking to you as ambassadors. We want you to, because we represent Christ wherever we find ourselves. God was in Christ, verse eighteen. God was in Christ, not imputing the world's trespasses against them, but reconciling the world to Himself. And verse nineteen, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We beseech you on the behalf of Christ, be ye reconciled. We are talking on the behalf of Christ this morning. I said that Christ doesn't have a physical body now here, so we are His body. We are, if you don't go, Christ can, if you don't go there, Christ can't go there. There are people you meet who Christ, they are meeting the Christ in you. There's a reason why Christ sent you to that university. So that you can be the, the foot of Christ there. You can be the hand of Christ there. You can, be, you can be the eyes of Christ there. Christ sent you there. Don't let him down. Because you want to look cool. You want to look sophisticated. You also want some girls. You want boys to like you. So you are, you are killing the Christ in you so boys can like you. Girls can like you. So you can fit in that club. You won't preach because when you preach they will laugh at you. Yeah. They're, they're blind people will laugh at pe- people like you. So they think you are mad. So it's okay for people to laugh at you. It's okay, Jesus puts it this way, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, 11, 12. He said, blessed are you, those of you who are persecuted for righteousness sake, not for doing something wrong, okay? Not for going to sleep with somebody's girlfriend. Not for going to gossip about somebody. If you are persecuted for righteousness sake, for the fact that you are doing right, in First Peter he says that, blessed are you if you do right and you suffer for it. Said so if you do right and you suffer for it, First Peter chapter three. If you should suffer for, uh, uh, yeah, you are blessed, and do not be afraid. If you suffer for doing right, chapter two verse eighteen and nineteen. First Peter chapter two verse eighteen and nineteen. Verse nineteen. There's, there's some suffering somewhere there. Yes, for. This is commendable. It because of conscience towards God, one endures grief, wow. suffering wrongfully. You are suffering, but it's not a rightful suffering. Wow. But it's because of your conscience towards God. Wow. Because of the way you, you know Christ has arrested your heart. And you are so, he said, blessed are you. He said the same thing, Jesus. Look at the next verse. Blessed are you. For what credit is it? If when you are beaten for your fault, <laughs> You take it patiently. You haven't achieved anything. For not being on time for your lectures and you are suffering for it, it's not an achievement. <laughs> for sleeping when I'm preaching, it's, it's not an achievement. <laughs> Especially when you're sitting on the front seat. <laughs> it's, it's not an achievement. But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, wow. this is commendable. Wow. Do good. Do good and don't be afraid of the consequences. Yes. Do good. Do right. Do God. Do God and don't be afraid of the consequences. It will always come with consequences, but God will defend you. Amen. Leave God to do the defense. Sometimes he doesn't defend you at the time you think he should or at the time they think if he is, he would. Did God defend Jesus when they were killing him? No. They killed him. And he actually cried, God, why have you forsaken me? Wow. But three days later, three days later, he defended him, raised him. Come on. Yeah. 
He will do it in his own time. Just do God and leave the replication to him. If you suffer for doing God, it's good. Then you can boast of, Paul said, forbid it that I should boast. Save in the cross, Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. He said, forbid it that I should boast or I should glory. Give me the boast, uh, uh, Nicky James. Yeah. God forbid that I should boast, except in the cross. Oh, this is interesting. Except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not even my cross or his cross. That I, I should boast. By, watch the, by whom the world is crucified to me and I am crucified wow. to them. Forbid me. If I, I have boasting, I'm boasting about cross. Cross! Cross is an, uh, the symbol of suffering. So if there's any boast to make, let me boast the fact that Jesus died to save me and I stand for him and I preach for him and I do his will and I'm living for him. Let me boast about that and I'm suffering. No problem, no problem, no problem, no problem. No problem, no problem. But you are not doing God because people will laugh at you. That shows that you are not a genuine Christian. You are not following Christ. He says that blessed are you if men, if you are persecuted for what? Righteousness sake. For those who are, for this is the kingdom. Actually, the kingdom, the rulership, God is a king. God reigns. Reign. The reign of God is yours. And I'm suffering through persecution. Yeah, God should go. The kingdom of God belongs to you. Wow! Wherever you go, you are coming with the kingdom. Satan, devil, see that first. And they shake. Look at the next verse. I like the verse. We are going to verse 12. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you. Please. Falsely is important. Falsely is important then. <laughs> okay? Falsely is important. Because some of you, the things that some people are saying about you is true. It's true. Your room is so dirty. Is it not true? <laughs> it's true. So if your mom is screaming every time, check, check, look at the way your room is dirty, and there's nothing, place is stinking, and literally, you don't dish your dishes, you pile dishes in the sink. <laughs> yeah, take away bowls hiding under your bed. <laughs> but I said, blessed are you. If they say evil against you, say all kinds, not only one type, all kinds, all kinds of evil against you falsely. And they get to say it because of your stance for Christ. For the sake of Christ, they are saying all these things falsely. He said, you are blessed. See, some of you, 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 you have not actually got the grace, uh, come to grips with how blessings operate. Look at where Jesus put the blessing. Look at where the blessing is. You can see the lot of sacrifice here. The sacrifice, this sacrifice, the amount of blessing is generating. And you just walk around. I'm blessed because you are you got a bank loan. Because guys are say, girl, you look nice. So you are walking. I'm blessed, girl. Guys like me. No, that's easy. Because you got a new job. Because something good is happening. He said, don't define the blessing from there. Define the blessing from your, what you are doing. You are the blessed, not what is happening around you. You are the blessed. So Joseph found himself in Potiphar's house, and Potiphar found out that everything seems to be working around this guy. Even though he's, he's been brought as a slave. This slave is a different slave. It's a blessed, oh, oh it's a blessed slave. You are a blessed student. You are a blessed daughter. You are a blessed son. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Your father will admit that this my son is blessed. Amen. Your mother will admit that this my daughter is blessed. Amen. Your cousins will say, hey, that's what this one is different to. People must admit and know that they are dealing with a blessed person. Amen. Not because of the car you drive, the shoe you're wearing, the, the, the hair wig you're wearing, or anything you possess, even the uni you attend. But Joseph didn't attend the University of Oxford. He was attending Potiphar's University, and they downgraded him to Peckham University. <laughs> yeah, 
But if every, when he landed in prison, things were working around him so much that the one who has always been taking care of prisoners said, ah, I think you can do the job better than me. You are the senior here. Even though on paper I'm senior, but I leave everything in your hands. Run it. Run it. Because the guy, things work for him. What? Because the hand of God was on his life. And Jesus said, how do you procure that kind of hand on your life? He said, showed us the root. He said, blessed are you. Blessed are you. He didn't say, blessed things you will have. You, will not, you don't have to look blessed. You are actually blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. I'm telling you. Don't, don't. You are checking in for a flight. And they upgraded you to, let's say, business class. So you think that's God that you are blessed. It's good, but please don't, don't let. They do it for people, Buddhists, Muslims, thieves. I mean, they do it for anybody. <laughs> you understand? That? Please, let's, let's redefine what it means to be blessed. Don't put the focus of blessing on manifestation, physical man. The focus of blessing is actually in a, or the person Christ has endorsed based on your activities. Your sacrificial engagements moves you from one level. He said, blessed are you. Blessed are you. You are actually blessed. It doesn't have to look like it, but you are just blessed. Amen. That means that you, when you are on the high seas and there is a storm and the whole boat is sinking, because you are on board, the boat cannot sink. The, the, what, takes, what it takes for a boat to sink, the boat loses it. It can't sink because there is a blessed personality on board. High seas, but you are on board. Go and ask Paul. He says that eh, because of me, there's no, there, no one life will be lost. No one life because I'm here. No one life. They should be thanking God for this guy. Come, this prisoner, prisoner number 82 on the, on, the, on the board. Yeah. Because of him. An angel, a whole angel came from heaven and said, God has given you those who are traveling with you. Wow. They don't know that. They don't know that there is a guy on board I wish your university knew who they are dealing with, who have come to the university. Yeah. How I wish your aunties knew how they should know who this family member is. How I wish they know. How I wish your sister, the way she talks to you. How I wish she knew. Usually they don't tend to know at all because family members tend to downgrade, it doesn't matter whoever you are. Especially once it's the blessing of God, the hand of God, that's even worse. Theologians believe that Jesus Christ, his, his immediate brethren, were not with him in the, from the beginning. His immediate brother, life, blood brother, blood sister, they were not part of his disciples from the beginning. His real brother, Joseph and them, say they're not there. So, people will not celebrate you. Don't wait for them to. So, if you want them to celebrate you, you may have to change to what they celebrate and what they see. And then you are losing the actual blessing, what it calls, what it means to be blessed. Yeah. You're losing it. You can all go somewhere and eat the same food. They say everybody is poisoned. Though. The people are dying. Ah, but you, what, I didn't feel it. Ah, but maybe you didn't eat the same thing. You, ah, but I, I even ate more than you. <laughs> Come here, no. But the Bible says that. <laughs> the Bible says that the king was so surprised that about these three Hebrew boys, and I use, the Bible used this phrase, of whose bodies fire could not have power. Hallelujah! In the book of Daniel, it said, on their power, fire could not have power on their bodies. Yes. Yes. Chapter 3. And the, set, and the uh, satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men on whose bodies fire had oh. <laughs> on, what was I said? On the, fire had no power on their bodies. <laughs> Think about it. On their bodies, fire had no power. There's nothing that fire can't deal with. That's why God will wipe everything with fire. But there are certain individuals. The Bible says on wood, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33, it said, they quench the violence of fire. <laughs> on whose bodies 
fire had no power. Not only on their bodies, even their clothes. Yeah. Even their clothes. Uh, Daniel. On whose bodies fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected. The benefit of the garment is not where it was bought. It's not the, the, uh, the designer, the label on it. It's who is wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? It wasn't fireproof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like that. It wasn't fireproof. <laughs> But the one wearing it, wow. fire couldn't have power over their body. Yeah. So hallelujah! Yeah. What are we talking about? Wow. So fire could not, and so their hair was not singed. By serious, on whose bodies the fire had no power. Never forgot that phrase. They were surprised. And look at these guys, on whose bodies fire had no power. And he said, they are the, the hair of their head was not singed, nor were the garments affected, and the smell of fire was not on. Ah! You can't smell that they've been around fire. Meanwhile, they were in the hottest fire. I'm talking about blessing. But if they are blessed, why should they go into fire? If they are blessed, fire can't have power over them. So stop talking about the immediate uh, circumstances around your life. Uh, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this? Let others go through what you are, what you are going through and let's see where it will end up. Wow. You will go through what others go through, but the outcome will be definitely different. Yeah. Why? Because there's a difference between someone who is blessed and someone who is not blessed. The people who threw them in the fire, they got bent. They got bent. I'm telling you. They got bent and it was bad. They lost their, they couldn't work again. They got bent, but they who went into the fire, Fire had no power over their bodies. Lions could not eat human. Hungry lions couldn't eat one man. One man, oh, hungry lions. So Jesus said, blessed are you. That's what I'm talking about. The focus is the you. What has come upon you? And those things don't come anyhow because you've, you, you are saying amen. <laughs> those things don't happen. It's based on a certain process you are going through. So when you are going through the process, you have to know this is taking me somewhere. This is taking me somewhere. This is it's changing my status from inside. From inside. Then demons will say, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. They saw Jesus and say, hey, why have you come into my house before our time? Son of a, why you? They knew him. But people, ordinary people couldn't, couldn't tell. Don't wait for people to tell what has happened to you. Work yourself into what God has said. And with time, you will even see amazing results of your life. The, the outcome, outcome, the outcome of your life is phenomenal. It's phen- you, are not, you, are, you are not doing anything exceptional, but the outcome is phenomenal. I'm talking about someone who is blessed. I am blessed. Put Joseph in Potiphar's house, he will flourish. Put him in prison, he will flourish. Make a mistake, bring him around the palace, he will take over. He didn't take over by coup d'etat. The king said, you should have it. He said, everything in Egypt is under your command. Ah, what did the king see in this guy? It's the blessing at work. It makes people make decisions about you that is smart. That is not, it's not normal. And they are very happy. And they are convinced that this is the best decision that must be made. How can you bring someone from prison straight to making a prime minister? From prison. First of all, you have to set the person free, put you on probation. <laughs> Straight from prison to prime minister by a king's decree. So from today, no one goes anywhere. Everybody, the, you are in charge of the land, apart from me. You are in charge. What, what is this? That's blessing. That's blessing. So... That's why when you understand these things, you don't envy someone who looks blessed. Mm. <laughs> he looks blessed. It looks like this girl, a lot of guys like him. As for me, no one likes him. Don't worry. Oh, come on. Come on. There are a lot of very gorgeously pretty girls 
who don't have anyone to marry them. And not just that. The, uh, most, almost all men that come into their lives are not stable or are not faithful to them. But you, it's my, sometimes when God is with you, it looks like it's not working. Why does it look like it's not working? So that you justify those he foreknew, he called. Those he called, uh, those he foreknew, he predestined. Those he predestined, he called. Those he called, he justified. So there's a process of justification you are going through. And when the time is ripe, when the time is full, God himself will say, least let me in the path of righteousness for his name, not for your name's sake, excuse me. You don't have any name. For Jehovah's name's sake, for himself. So whatever he's doing in your life is not for your convenience. It's for himself, but you benefit heavily. Wow. It's for himself. So then if it's not ready, time, it's not time for him to, can you imagine in Luke chapter 1, the last verse, the last verse, Luke chapter 1, uh, that, uh, yes, so the child, verse 80, so the child, talking about John the Baptist, the child grew and became strong, in, can you imagine, he was growing, he became strong in spirit, and was in the desert, huh? Someone who is growing, why are you keeping him in the desert? Well, the guy is supposed to be a popular person, don't keep him in the desert, that's the problem of people who think they, have, they are talented, they are, they are good singers. Instead of joining the choir and singing in the background for a long time, until it's time for God to show you for, they want to show themselves for, they are going to launch your own album. Go. So people are trying to make themselves to be seen. That's one day I was uh, uh, being interviewed by some international television, and they asked me what has been the, how did I get to where I am? And I said, I've always never seemed to be known. I've always, seek, I've always sought to know. Because if you seek to know, you'll be known. Many people are seeking to be known. That's why you've done your own vlog. <laughs> if you are good on social media, why don't you use it to build the house you are feeding from? Yes. Wow. Why don't you use it to build the house? Wow. So the blessing is actually is on a person that has become part of the person. And the effect of the blessing is what you, we tend to see. Yeah. But most of us focus on the effect. But the blessing itself is on a person. And to procure the blessing, people might laugh at you. People might call you names. People might write you up. They will exclude you from the uh, chat, group chat. Yeah. You should be rejoicing because it's not any group chat to boast about. Some of the pictures and the videos they share in it is not edifying. So they have now started, formed a new one. They've excluded you. You didn't even know it's been going on for two months. You just found out and you are sad that they excluded you. Ah, said rejoice. Blessed are you. <laughs> Matthew chapter, yes. And say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Look at the next verse, verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding. Said, don't be normally glad. Exceeding. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> you can't tell everybody. But some people said, can you imagine? Some of the people have started excluding me because of my Christian stance. Started, <laughs> it's, it pains. It's painful. But it said, be exceedingly glad. Let your gladness exceed normal gladness. Exceedingly glad. Why? Because there's a massive reward in heaven. Ooh. You're only thinking of how, who will marry me? All these guys in the church who will marry me when I went to marry. All these girls, who would I marry? Start focusing on securing a massive reward from heaven. When it's coming, you don't even have to advertise yourself. People will look for you to favor, to help you. They will be looking for you to help you. Blessings or material things, physical things, opportunities will chase you. Amen. So some of you young ladies, buckle down. Instead of booking uh, spa, spa with the church brother or going. Uh, uh, stop it and start. 
paying the price to walk with Jesus. And the blessing is actually become part of you. Where he said, what do you think? He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. They are going, they said, there's nothing good there. Don't worry, I'm coming myself. It, it follows me. Nobody's favored there in that area. Don't worry, once I get the favor, I will show up. Because goodness and mercy follows me. They follow you. They, they don't have to be there before you get there. Like deep sea divers. There's no air under the, under the water. No air. How are you going to breathe? No, I'm coming with my own oxygen tank. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going with my own oxygen tank. Don't worry about water, air that's not there. I have my own oxygen tank under the water, and I'll survive. So he said, when he said, goodness and mercy shall follow me, don't worry where you are going. You are bringing your own Amen. supply. Ah, hallelujah. So people will despise you. My mm. Bible says that God has chosen the foolish things of this world. To confound the wise, First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Choosing the things that are not. <laughs> I like that bit. The things that are not. I like that. Choosing the weak things. So God has chosen the, the foolish things of this world to confound. Uh, 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 well, to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of uh, this world to put to shame the things that are mighty. The things that are not. New King James. Yeah. The things that are not. You know, to bring to naught, okay, I, I've chosen um, uh, just the things which are not to bring to naught. <laughs> Two different types of naught. <laughs> the things that are. John chapter 1, verse, uh, I think, 45 or 46. Can any good thing come from Nazareth? No, it's not where you were born. It's not who knows you. It is what you are practicing. Yes. What are you practicing? Some of you have a very distasteful past and background. It's not nice. Your background is very rough. But get busy practicing these secrets. Because a, a time is coming, they can't reconcile where you are in life and your background. Yes. Ah, are you sure you came from here? Mm. Are you sure this is your background? Yes. So how did you get here? Yes. Grace. Grace, grace. The, 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 you become a constant puzzle to people to explain because no one from such a background can get here. And yet, you came from the darkest part of this background and yet you are here. Amen. Yet you are here. That is why God allowed you to be in a place like this. One, one of our covenant scriptures is in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse 8 and 9. God raises the beggar. Katata, Shabbat. I'm defining what makes us ask. God raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ashes. Not just that. He's not only raising and lifting them, but he does something else. To set them among princes. Maybe you don't know. There's a difference between a prince and a beggar. There's a massive difference. But he lifts the beggars and sits them amongst princes. So he's sitting there, he's not one of the princes. The prince, no, no, you are not, what's your background? Who's your father? His father is king, no. So how are you here? But you are even more qualified to be here than us. They know you are, you are supposed to be here, but when they trace your background, you are not supposed to. And it's, a, it's an enigma. Yep. They're confused. They can't say we don't like, because they actually, your being there is validating them more. It's adding class to them. And yet they can't say, they can't trace your back. So, and they can't exclude you, yes. Yet, they can't say you are not supposed to be here. Mm. It raises the beggars from the dung here. From the dust. From the dust. Some of you have been in the dust for a very long time. Your family is the least respected in the big clan. The dust. He raises the beggar from the dust. I see someone, somebody coming out of the dust. Raises the poor from the dust and lift the beggar from the ash heap and set them among princes and make them. God Himself said, "You, you are inheriting the throne. Make them, make them inherit the throne of glory." Hallelujah. Yeah, that's our covenant. This is the scripture God gave you when Caris was started. 
It's a pro, it's, this is what grace can do. Yeah. Charis means grace. And this is the foundational scripture. And my grace is sufficient. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. These are the foundational scriptures. My grace is sufficient. And the last scripture, three scriptures, the last one is uh, uh, um, Second Samuel. Well, David, the Bible says that uh, the people were discontented. They came they got in the cave of Adullam. They came to David. Yeah. And after some time, they were different people. Yeah. You look at them. Is they, are these the same people? This is what grace can do. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter how you came in. But if you can stay in. You don't have to look like it. When you are blessed, it doesn't have to look like you are blessed. It doesn't have to look like you are blessed. The father put his hand on him and blessed him. I'm talking about Jacob. I said, bless him, I bless him. And after the blessing, he said, I'll kill you. He ran as a fugitive with only a staff. The blessed man, yes, he didn't even have... He didn't have anywhere to sleep. He was he used a stone as a pillow. Yeah. Wow. In the wild, anything at all could have happened to him. The blessed man, but yet he was running out of, wow. out of home, running for his dear life. That, what, is, uh, what is blessed about this? Yeah. You give me time. Wow. Yeah. And nothing, when you are blessed, nothing can stop you. No. Wow. You, you can never drown in the, in the journey of life. No. They will see you on the other side. They say, how did he get there? And then you are just walking with a swag. He said, to the God be the glory. To God. It keeps you humble. Yeah. It keeps you humble. Thank you. It wow. keeps you humble. Thank if you can explain why you, are, uh, uh, why you deserve where you are, it's not grace. It's not grace. You, you know you don't qualify. Yeah. When it's grace. Yeah. Yeah. When it's grace. So it keeps you humble. Amen. It keeps you humble. Because you know that this thing that you are operating it is not yours. Grace keeps you humble. That's why the Bible says God resists the proud. Give grace to the humble. Gives it. And the more you know it's grace, the more you, are, you, you the very day you feel like, no, no, it's me. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I mean, I'm here. It, it's always determined by how, what offends you in church. Your level of pride can easily be manifested or can be determined by what offends you in church. Your level of pride. Or church is the, should be the last place. Looking at the number of fornication you have done, church should be the last place you should be offended. Yeah. 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 Mercy. A fornicator like you, yeah. a thief like you. Yeah. Today, God has saved you. Hallelujah. You are serving in the choir. Hallelujah. You are serving in the ashes. Hallelujah. You are in church shouting hallelujah. hallelujah. And, and, and you are choosing to be offended because a choir, an usher didn't make you sit near your friend. Hallelujah. So, oh, this guy, I hate him. He doesn't know. Hey, 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 please, 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 please. There are unresolved issues in your past. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. A case, if a case is opened, it will be good for you. Yeah. Because your dissertation, full of plagiarism. Degree, just humble yourself. Don't pick on people unnecessarily and especially don't take unnecessary offense because there is a case that can be open. Mm. Tell somebody you better humble yourself, boy. <laughs> no, if it's a girl, don't say boy, please. Girl, <laughs> humility is good. I, one of the things I'm grow, as I'm growing, I'm beginning to appreciate is. I don't want to deal with people based on the fault I know about them. Okay. Okay. Yes. When I'm dealing with people, I have to use a lot of sympathy, mm. empathy, mm. consideration, and the biggest word, mercy. mercy. Mm. Be careful how you use what you know about people against them. Okay. Yeah. Because there are skeletons in your wardrobe that haven't come out yet. Yeah. yeah. You have left your garment somewhere. It hasn't been brought yet. There's an evidence against you somewhere. <laughs> now, what, what am I trying to say? One, let's humble ourselves, okay? Let's humble ourselves because none of us is very special. Let's humble ourselves and trust God. And do the work. And do what to bring more God on us. Do what to bring more God into your life. You are too young to waste these opportunities. 
the greatest opportunities of a person is when they are young. Because yep. that's where the concentration of strength is. And you can, some things require strength. That's why if you are pursuing a certain level of education, it's better you do it when you are young. Don't do it when you are grandma. When you are not young, some things are hard. So when you are young, things are fresh. And that is where you have a lot of libido. Your sexual drive is a sign that you still have strength to do great things for God. So don't think you are, ah, I'm a bad person. No, you are not bad. It's just that the energy is there for great things. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to have sex drive. It's okay. There's nothing, there's nothing ungodly about having sex drive. It's, it's a sign that you're actually normal. And then if the stronger it is, it's a sign that there's a lot of energy. You can do greater things. Yeah. So divert the energy into doing something. Expo- don't re- regulate your exposure, what you see, what you hear. Because that will, use the, will, will channel the energy in, into things that will bring drama in your life. Yeah. How many of you know it's not nice to have drama in your life? At all? Oh. Not nice. So the energy should be channeled. If you want to channel your energy into future building opportunities, first of all, check who your friends are. Check who your friends are because that will influence your exposure or that will determine your exposure. That will determine what um, the healthy competition around your life. When we are, those days in, in secondary school, boarding school, when we are going on vacations, the, everyone is going to come back with how many souls have won. Wow. So we all try to, I want to break my record so that when we come back, I'll say, I won 28 souls. Wow. And one day, in fact, one of the targets is to fast longer. Mm. Yeah. One of our friends came back, he was so skinny, he had fasted 14 days raw. Wow. Wow. I targeted it. I said, me to went vacation, I'll do this thing. I'll do this thing. I tried it, but I could. <laughs> I, I was dying. I, 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 I gave up. All my, my friends are pastors. The ones, my, like, we, we are friends. That's, because, you see, your friends will tell me where you are going. If you want to know where you end, you check who you are befriending, what their interests are, what their focus are. It's your friends. Most of you, the bad things that have happened to you is because of your friends. You are not bad. I put it to you. You are not bad. You, you are not bad. You are not bad. You are not a gangster. Even though you joined the gangs, you are not, you are not a gangster. You are not bad. You are not bad. You've been to prison, but you are not bad. If you had not followed those friends, you wouldn't have been in prison. If I, if I had followed those friends, I would have been where you were. So it's not me, and it's not you, but it's the path. You go and stand on platform one. The train is going to Birmingham. So once you jump on that train, you end up in the Midlands. Because of the track, is, is, that's where it's going. But if you stand on platform, pl- platform seven, it's going to Southampton. Mm. So you will find a, a, a different direction. So check, if you want to do well in life, check who your friends are. You must be strong enough to disassociate. Yep. You must be strong and you must be so concerned about your future that your, the interest of, in your future will make you make some hard decisions. You have to make some hard decisions, yes. Some people, you don't like them because they are not posh enough, but they will help you to do this church thing well. Don't worry about what people will say about you. That's number one. But check who you are associating yourself with. It will determine your, the outcome of your life. Pastor, why are you saying this thing? Because somebody must break through. Amen. You must do well. You must do well. Amen. And you will do well. Amen. You don't say the amen, act that push. I, I want to force you to do well in life. Because Satan is stealing too much from most of us. From a, a lot of young people with potential. Satan is stealing from your future. You see, when you are under 20, you think you'll be 80. Yeah. When they say someone is 80 years, you think, oh, yeah, I'll get there. Really? Yeah. When you start hitting 50s, you begin to beg God, please. Can I, can, can. That's when you realize that even to, to turn 60, it's a big push. 
Yeah. Let alone 80. I don't know how the queen managed to get to there. A 90 something. Yeah. How they get there? Because the, the older you are growing, the more you see people dying around you. You hear this one is dead. Some of you are young, but some, your classmates are dead. <clears throat> and it could have been you. But why did God keep you going? When you are young, you think, oh no. Many people think, oh, I'll buy, when I finish school, I'll buy my first house at Kensington. <laughs> Even if you'll be able to rent in Peckham, that would be another story. <laughs> but you see, you think that it will happen. Kebs, is it not true? When you haven't finished school, you think, but when I finish, I'll do this, I'll do this, and I'll do this, I'll do this. No, life is not like that. So the better way to do it, prepare yourself. Put yourself in what gives you advantages by starting engaging in profitable ventures. Check who your friends is and do God. Because when you do God, you never get failed. You never get let down. I'm a typical example. Wow. I'm a, I'm a clear, classic example. I've been doing God from my youth. And I say this with all humility under God. I've been doing God from my youth and I'm doing well. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing well. Hey, I'm, t- I'm telling you, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I am doing well. Because for over 32 years, I've been doing God. Sit there in your little corner and think that, oh, it doesn't, it makes a difference. You don't know what you're talking about. When the, the older you grow, the more you realize life is more complex than you thought. Yes. And to break through and to achieve anything, it doesn't come on a silver platter. You have to start doing it now. If you don't start putting yourself on the track to break through, you only break down. Wow. You only break down. But I see you doing well. Amen. The good news is that you have to despise your past. Because some of us, we have past. Satan has told you because of this past. System have told you because of this past. You won't go anywhere. It's a lie. Not when you are doing God and God said, I'm lifting you from the ash heap. From the, ah! God will raise you and put you among the princes. Shout, I believe. I believe. You will do well. You are saying amen. When you say amen, it's just like you are clicking the download button. Amen. Yeah. So, so when I'm speaking as an authority based on God's word, and so when I speak a word from, the, this is the lifeline of the church, when I speak something, a, a word from God's word on the authority of the scripture, when I speak it, now it's up to you to decide to click the download amen. into your life. Sit down, let me show you something. Looking at where you are coming from and what has happened in your life yep. and the retinue of failures in your family line, you need to download every positive yep. pronounced prophetic yes. word. Yes. You need to embrace every positive. It's not madness. Let those who think it's madness, let them think. While, while they are mocking you, God is. Hey. Let, let them think. Embrace it. Embrace that. Amen. And humble yourself. And say amen. And humble yourself. And find a way to serve. Service will help you to entrench yourself in church. Service will help you to entrench you. So the more you are in part of departments, it helps you to entrench yourself in church. It's not, you are not building the church. You are building your future. You are building your future. I've always been in church. And every time I have to serve. Now God has chosen to put me at the front, to serve from the front. But I've always enjoyed, it doesn't matter where I'm serving. Back in, I, I, it's, it's my hobby now. I love, I love God so much. I love him so much. Nothing is too much to do for God. Wow. Nothing is too much. And I've never done anything for God on consideration of financial benefits or material benefits. Never in my life. And rather, my benefits keep chasing me. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. You don't have to go for it. It will be added to you. Someone does the addition. It will be added to you. Good wife, take it. Healthy children, take it. Good house, take it. Some financial breakthrough, take it. 
Some career big bear lifting, take it. Amen. Buying houses, take it. Amen. I mean, God will be adding it to you. Amen. Don't be worried about marriage when you are busy about God. Yes. Because marriage is God's idea. Mm. <laughs> Adam was minding his business. God says, not good for him to be alone. Adam was minding. God said, the way Adam, I want to actually make Adam benefit. Let me find a wife for him. So just do God. He will settle you. Amen. Settle down and do God, and God will settle you. God bless you for listening to the amazing message. We pray your life can never be the same. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Karis Church on YouTube and to listen to more messages from David Entry on all relevant streaming platforms. You can also connect with David Entry and our youth ministry on social media. Find David Entry on Instagram and TikTok at davidentry underscore and find our youth ministry at Karis Phase 2 on Instagram and TikTok and at Karis on Campus on Snapchat. Be blessed.